Okay, if you've, if you've got to make a lot of gifts for people, if it's the time of year when all the birthdays kind of come in a clump, I have one word for you, clocks. You know why? Because they're easy to make. You can make them out of darn near anything. Witness this collection. See, here we have a, a basket clock made from a basket. Looks good in a sort of cottagey kitchen. Um, this is a wooden, just a nice old piece of hacked up um, barn board. Kind of cool. This is a very sleek little brass uh, serving tray turned into a clock. This is a small and still sleek silver tray. And this is my favorite, okay? This is a classic lunchbox clock. So you always know when it's time to eat. And also, um, this, is a, this is a clock for the girl who's perpetually late for important appointments, okay? So you know you're late and you can't hide it. So I wanna show you how to make three different clocks. One will be made from an antique plate. So that's a special drilling technique. One is gonna just be a piece of wood but I stained it so it's kind of cool looking. And then I really want to try something kind of yeah. high tech looking and slick. So I'm going to try cutting um, a piece of sheet metal and making a clock out of it. And it's going to look like one of those, you know, chromey, minimalist kitchen kind of things, like a really slick clock. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, first thing to do is, if you've got an old antique plate, is get um, a tile bit. They look like this. They're made for cutting into glass, tile, and ceramic. So it's important to wear your safety glasses because stuff flies around. And it's also important to find the actual center of the darn thing because otherwise your clock is going to be cockamamie, or clockamamie, if you will. So uh, let's just find the center. And if you've done any sewing, this is just going to really appeal to you, actually, because Sewing's all about measuring and finding centers of things. Okay, so the face of this thing is exactly 10 inches wide. So I just go right for a nice little fiber right in the middle, and same thing here. And what I love about this plate is that if you look at a clock, every number is exactly 30 degrees apart. Well, check this plate out. It's got all these marks already, look. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Perfect, eh? Well, that's sort of a happy circumstance. And now I've got a, drill, a drilling point. So I'm just going to set the bit. And I'm going to start slow because it's going to want to skate a bit. Oh, it's skating terribly. Okay, so I need to just take a sharp little pointy thing and etch it a bit. If you've ever mounted towel racks in a tile bathroom, you'll have used one of these drill bits, and you know it can be kind of, it can try your patience just getting it started. Come on. There it goes. You can see it's starting to throw a little bit of powder as I go through the glaze. That's the sign I've got it started. And I'll clean it up from the back. Okay, now I have to get this hole big enough to accept the shaft of the, the clock parts, and um, they're over here. These things, you get them at a, a woodworker's supply, specialty places. They're mail order, there are all sorts of them around, and they just slide through the hole once you get the hole big enough, which clearly I don't yet. So I'm going back to the front of the plate to just enlarge the opening a little bit more. I'm closer, but I I'm still not there. Okay, I'll be here a while. But you see, it's good because you, you go slowly and then you don't break the plate. And that's really the key thing here, especially if you're dealing with an heirloom, which I doubt because you wouldn't be drilling a hole in it or your relatives would kill you. There you go, there's your present. It's Grandma Moses' plate! You know, that'd be awful. Okay, so. There's an old Scottish proverb which someone wrote to cheer up other Scottish people. 
Be happy while you're living, for you're a long time dead. Now that's a trick proverb, really, because it was created to make you realize the importance of being happy, but the logic really bums you out. Oh yeah, that's what I call us, a perfect little hole. Okay, so setting that aside for a second, the drilling technique on a piece of wood is just a little bit different. For one thing, you need a slightly larger drill bit, okay? This will be your four inch hole saw. That's the name of this. And uh, it looks kind of evil, but this is the hole that it gives you. See, it's our friend, really. When you hang a wooden clock, because it's already fairly thick, you need to cut in so that you can put the little pack of um, clockworks on the back and, and sink it a little bit. So we need to find a way to drill a hole like that. And um, that's why you need the hole saw. Now, this is on a cordless drill, and even though a cordless drill isn't as powerful as a, as a real drill, like a corded drill, it can still give you a, a, quite a kick. I've marked the center already, so I just put the pilot bit on that center mark. There we go, right like that. I've clamped the wood down pretty hard with this clamp. So here's the technique with these things, because what happens is they, they bind and they take you for a ride, so the, it's better to just use short pulses like this. Okay, now to test to see whether you've got the depth right or not, you need to um, take a piece of wire or some darn thing that you can poke down the little gully that you've created here, and then take the, the clock. That's perfect. So I know it's deep enough. So now, what am I going to do? I'm going to chisel this out using my very, very sharp, cool chisels. Now, I love my chisels dearly, and I take really good care of them. They've got these special little protective caps on, and the reason I'm so in love with them is because I've I've polished them to the finest edge. They're really sharp. All right, so there's a beveled side of the chisel and a straight side. And it's a lot easier to steer it if, you're, if you've got the bevel down. If you've got the, the um, straight edge down, you end up going deeper and deeper into the wood without even realizing you were going that deep. So it's easier to chisel um, with the grain of the wood. So I'm just going to draw a line across to mark so I remember. And I'm going to take a wooden mallet. You can use a real hammer, but the wooden mallet is bigger. So you don't have to concentrate on hitting the end of it. You can be looking at where your chisel is pointed. So uh, safety glass is on again. And I'm just going to put the chisel in the middle of my um, line here. Okay, and this takes a while, but it, it, it reminds you of your caveman days in a funny way, if you can remember that far back. Adulthood is strange because you constantly hear that you have to make time for yourself. When you're a kid, nobody ever says, you should make time for your own needs. So when we get to be adults, it's pretty clear we don't have much practice. All right, uh, that's got a nice clean bottom now. Smooth. So unfortunately, you're gonna cover it with the clock workings, so nobody's ever gonna see your beautiful chisel work. Uh, but that's all there is to, to making a wooden clock. Well, the face is a, a little bit more interesting, but I just wanted to show you how to uh, have a go at a steel face. This uh, piece of galvanized sheet metal, and this is what they use to make those big ducts in uh, heating and air conditioning systems. So it's available pretty much everywhere. And the only thing is when you're cutting this stuff, I usually just work with copper and it's really soft. Working with sheet metal is a little bit different. It's a little unforgiving. And there are two kinds of tin snips in the world. These want to cut to the right. These want to cut to the left. And you'll find that one or the other of them suits you better. I'm left-handed, so I have to use these. 
I'm going to now scribe a circle on the metal. And um, you want to work close to a corner because the um, as you cut, the waste material builds up and it's just easier to have a thinner margin of waste material. So that's about right. This is a really cool compass because it has um, two little scribing points, metal points. Um, instead of one end being lead. So it's really a lot easier to see because it scores the metal. Okay, so there's a lovely circle. And um, the actual cutting, uh, if you go in at a right angle or perpendicular to the edge of the circle and then try to turn your snips, you're going to be out of luck. So it's better to go in on a gradual angle like this. And you want to take short little bites because you don't ever want to sink the nose of the clippers into the metal because if you do, you end up with a really sharp burr on the outside edge. There it goes. Okay, it's not a clock yet but it's going to be a clock soon. Um, I'm just taking the edge off the sharp, a uh, little bit of a sharp edge from the tin snips, but it's really not too bad because as long as you don't drop that nose of the tin snips into the metal, you don't get that pucker thing. So it's really pretty smooth. Um, all right, now the next thing to do is clamp down the metal and drill for the uh, shaft of the clockworks, this thing. Now, drilling through metal is a bit tricky. For one thing, as soon as you put the blade on it, it skates. It goes, see, it goes up for a little dance. It's very decorative, but we don't really want that. So you either have to take a hammer and a nail and punch a little dimple in the um, metal, or you have a compression punch, which is what this is. It's spring-loaded, so it punches a little dimple in the, in the metal for me. And that gives my bit something it can find. See, and I'll just put my safety glasses. Okay, that's started it, all right? But I need to make a much bigger hole than this bit. So I can't just start with the great big bit because whenever you're drilling into metal, you need to graduate the sizes of the bits. Uh, if I go all the way through with this little bit to get it started, then the next bit will grab and bind and it'll be a terrible thing. So you just want a, t a slight dimple and then you move up a bit size. See, my, the next bit that I have loaded is a little bit bigger. So I'm, I widen the dimple with that. But it's very thin material, so I have to be subtle about this. So I take out a little bit more material, then I switch to the next size up. So it takes a little bit of patience, but it's really the best way to go through sheet metal. Okay, a little bit bigger. Oop. There, see how it bound like that and tore up a bit? Now that I'm definitely going to want to clean up with a file. So if you have a um, a round metal file, that would be good to just go in around the hole. But I don't really have one of those, so I'm going to have to just pick the bad side of the clock to start on. It's not so bad, actually. They're nice little cooperative little things. They just fall right off. Okay? Now, the fun part. Before I um, mark where the numbers are going to go, if you're going to use numbers. I mean, some people think it's just really hip not to use any numbers at all. Um, this is a, a rotary tool with a grinding, grinding bit on the end. See this bit? It's really cool. Look, it spins around. And when it gets going, it's really good for abrading metal. And this is another shaped grinding wheel. See this one? So what you do with these is you, this is what gives you you know, that slick artisan look with your um, metal clock 
watch. Get some of all this stuff out of the way. Okay, if I'd ever actually taken shop, I would have maybe learned to clean up after myself as I went, but no, I had to take home that. See how cool that looks? Woo! <laughs> okay, you guys, I <laughs> turned on the wrong one. There, oops. Whew. Okay, so I'll just keep doing that till it looks really pretty. As the writer Cynthia Heimel recently said, when in doubt, make a fool of yourself. There is a microscopically thin line between being brilliantly creative and acting like the most gigantic idiot on earth. So what the hell, leap, or let others leap for you. Okay, I've, I've actually put copper nails in to mark the hours on this clock and uh, no, I'm just teasing, they're short, okay. So now is the exciting moment when we actually put the clock together. Now, this is just gonna go, this projects through, this is where you attach the hands on the front, whoa, that's longer than I need. So I'll move to a slightly more modest version. That's gonna be good. And um, this is the hardware that they give you when you buy the works for the clock. You get that little, don't even think about it. You get the, the little black thing which has the, the works in it. Then you get this rubber friction washer which is also can be used as a spacer. They give you a brass washer, a little nut, a cap, and another even tinier nut. Okay, that's all. And then of course this hanger thing. So if you want to be able to hang the clock later, the shaft goes through that hole and then it sits in the little hole. <laughs> there we go. See, and then this just hangs. So flip it over. And the first thing you want to do is tighten this thing down. So you'll use the brass washer that they gave you, the bigger one, and then the little brass nut. You want to make sure it's threaded properly, which seems to be bizarrely difficult. No, there it goes. Then the hands slip on. The hour hand goes on first and it just sits there. Then the minute hand actually has a slightly different opening than the hour hand. So it sits on a separate little bit of the works here, like this. Now we'll slip the open-ended it's so little I can hardly show it to you. The open-ended nut goes over that to hold those two in position. Now, I'm using a second hand, so if I were gonna not use a second hand, I would use this close-ended, the cap nut. And that would be the end of everything. I'd be, there, my clock would be ready to go. But I'm, I'm using a second hand, so I'm just gonna, it's so tender, you gotta have very precise little digits here. Okay, so there, that's tightened up. And then the second hand, just, it comes with its own little, um, let me show you. It comes with its own little hollow um, attachment hardware. So it slips over that little pin and then that's what runs the second hand. Just slips over like that, okay? So now everything's ready to go. I just need to put the battery in it. And, um, and then I also need to actually finish the other two clocks. Okay, I've been able to finish all of my clocks. You see, they're all a li little bit different in attitude. This is the woodsy, but still kind of snappy model with the uh, copper nails to mark the hours. And then, this one is the, um, the grandmother's sort of kitchen model with the old plate. And these are just stick-on numbers. They come woo, like this and just peel them off and stick them on. So that looks kind of cool. And then this is the ever so high tech for those of us with chrome kitchens. You know what I'm saying? So clocks are clearly easy and kind of fun. 
There are people that have been doing it for a while and they've gotten fancy, like Peter Brooks, for example. He's an artisan and he makes these uh, beautiful, this look, it's got a pendulum. So he does really nice woodwork. And, um, and then this one is kind of my favorite because uh, I'm looking forward to retiring and uh, he's got the right attitude. And then this is the little cottage model. It's a little tiny clock, but you can see it's still sort of the same thing as what we used, nicely mortised into the back there. And uh, then there's the nautical model for shipboard. So clearly, it's just a matter of uh, your imagination and uh, having a little fun. And if you're going to do the sheet metal one, you just, just want to have a lot of time on your hands is all. One of the truly remarkable things about time is that it can record a simple event, like spending the afternoon making a clock, as a memorable burst of ingenuity and fun. I guess that's why they say that these are the good old days we're gonna miss in the years ahead.